And what she's more concerned with, who has the best chance of beating Bob Marshall in the general election. So if you can explain to us uh, why you uh, are the best option to defeat Bob Marshall in the general election. So I'll stand here uh, instead of coming around to answer the questions. Uh, first of all, first on the ballot, and first question, and first to beat Bob Marshall. So we're going to do that, right? <laughs> um, the answer to that is very simple. I mentioned it just a little bit before. We have to expand the electorate. We have to talk to those voters. We have 62,000 registered voters here in the district. Last election in 2015, 12,000 and some change voted. In 2013, 17,000 and some change voted. Out of 62,000 registered voters, Ladies and gentlemen, we have a problem of turnout. We have a problem of engagement. We have a problem of, we have a barrier standing between the even years congressional races and the presidential elections and Virginia's, and Virginia's odd year state elections. That is our barrier. And that is the barrier that I am accomplishing in this primary. We aren't even waiting for the general to do this. We are doing this now in the primary. The amount of people that we are going to see coming out on June 13th will be phenomenal. And they will be a diverse room just like this room today. And that is why we're going to beat Bob Marshall. Because Bob Marshall isn't beat by going after his own constituents who vote for him time and again. The, the, the very small portion of dedicated voters he has, that's not who we go after. We go after those voters who never show up or who show up in the presidential elections and never come out for the state elections. That's who, have to, that's who we have to go after. Number two, when Bob Marshall sent out his first email after the four of us were in the race, or at least, you know, after the transpiring of these campaigns happened, the first thing he mentioned was a sick business owner who went out to California to fundraise for this race. He mentioned how we're going to have national liberal money pouring into this district. I submit to you that's not what happened. Uh, <laughs> we have people around the country who care. The spotlight in the entire country is on Virginia this year. Virginia is an important commonwealth. We have people around the whole country caring about this, this election this year. That's why we have money coming out from the entire country. We have support coming out from the entire country. When Bob Marshall feels threatened by somebody, that's what he does. He sends out an email to his base saying, oh, the left liberals and the moderates are coming out to me. Please help me out. That's exactly what we're doing. That's exactly what we're going to do on November 7th. We are going to go after him. We are going to go after that seat. We're going to get it accomplished. And we're going to get it by expanding the electorate and talking to those folks who never vote in a Virginia state election in all years. That's how we're going to do it. I can defeat Delegate Bob Marshall because I know his record better than just about any other person in the Commonwealth of Virginia. After being his constituent for 25 years, covering him as a reporter for nine years, from the marriage equality fight in 2006 to his re-election campaigns in 2007, 2009, 2011, 2013, and 2015, when I helped Joe Palermo's job. And as a lifelong Manassas resident, as someone who knows the turf here, I grew, you have to understand that my roots are the same roots where Delegate Marshall has actually come up with his groundswell, all right? For example, I grew up in the same exact church as Delegate Marshall goes to at All Saints Catholic Church, where I was baptized, confirmed, and went to school there for five years, and that's where my family, who's actually here in attendance today, also goes to, uh, goes to church as well. And so when I say that I know Delegate Marshall's base, uh, I'm literally part of their family. I'm a black sheep. <laughs> but anyway, what I can uniquely do in this race is I can knock him off message and I can out-organize him and I can win. The reason on this, the evidence of this. When I, when I announced my candidacy on January 3rd, I made Fix Route 28 and innovate my slogan for a very particular reason. This is the biggest quality of life issue that Delegate Marshall has not addressed and has not fixed in his 25 years in office, going through Yorkshire and Centerville. And what did he do as soon as the General Assembly session was over? He sent out a letter to constituents, a taxpayer-funded letter, in which he blamed the Manassas Park governing body for his failure to secure adequate transportation funding. When you blame your own constituents for your failure in office, that is not a good winning re-election strategy. Meanwhile on this, what did I do? I took that letter, 
and I went straight to the press. I went straight to Alex Coma from Inside Nova and said, hey Alex, I got a story for you here. Got some people for you to talk to. And we turned that into a front page story. Took the entire front page, took all the third page. When Delegate Marshall used taxpayer, funded, taxpayer funds to sound out another letter to constituents, this time going on a six paragraph anti-transgender tirade, I went straight to the press about it again. At this point in the campaign, I've had more than 1,500 donations come into the campaign. We've had more than 70 unique individuals knocking on doors for us in this campaign. People have driven down all the way from Chappaqua, New York, all the way in from Charlottesville, Maryland, Washington, and right here. Thank you, Ellen Hackman, by the way. So we've had support from within the community. We've had support from abroad. This is on the reasons here, I've been endorsed by the Gay and Lesbian Victory Fund, by Equality Virginia Advocates, by Emily's List, by, Virgi by Virginia's List, by Women Under 40 PAC, by the Progressive Change Campaign Committee, by school board member Lori Williams, by two school board members in Fairfax County who were so upset at Delegate Marshall going in front of them and telling them what to do with their non-discrimination policy that they came out and canvassed for us beginning on January 28th. And I will say in, in closing here, that you, in order to beat Delegate Marshall, you've got to bring the fight to him, you've got to out-organize him. I have fought him and won in the General Assembly on two occasions. I was the only person, only candidate in this race who stood up to him in front of the Prince William County School Board when he tried to make a case for discriminating against Robbie and kids like him. And I will keep bringing the fight to him every single day of this race. Thank you. campaign is people power. We have a strong ground game that we are matching with some strong fundraising. Uh, you know, my Cimarron's right. Uh, Bob Marshall a couple weeks ago just sent out another email saying my gun controlled opponent outraised everything I had in two months, you know, what I had in uh, 2016. So he's using us to fundraise, but that's okay because I'm using him to fundraise. So I guess we're even. <laughs> we are. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, and I, I hate to bring this up, but you know, last time he was in a gubernatorial election year, like he is this year, he only won by 498 votes. I know you know that number. <laughs> He's vulnerable. So if our Hillary voters come out, we win. But I'm gonna actually take votes away from Bob. That's how we're gonna win. I'm gonna take moderate Republican votes. Uh, I'll tell you a quick story. I it was on call time, real late. My wife got home from uh, working at the nursing home. It was 8 o'clock, our kids were hungry, we didn't want to cook, so I said, I'm going to go get barbecue up at the local uh, barbecue uh, joint here. Yeah, I'll grab my six-year-old and we'll run up there. We ordered our food and I sat down. This woman comes walking in and she orders her food, she says, my daughter just got done with dance class, we want to head home, and she strikes up a little conversation with me. And she says, well, what do you do for a living? And I said, well, right now I feel like I'm campaigning and I'm a politician 24-7, but uh, by trade I'm, I'm an attorney, I'm a former prosecutor. And she said, what are you running for? And I said, here, uh, House of Delegates in uh, District 13. And she said, well, I have to admit, I'm a supporter of Bob, and I'm a good friend of Bob. You know, Bob's a good guy at heart. I know he's got some extreme views, but uh, he's like that old uh, history professor you never had in high school. And I said, I hear he's kind of a nice guy. He's, you know, very clever, smart. But uh, let me tell you why he's ineffective, and he's inefficient for this district. And he doesn't represent the people and our values. And she said, I'll give you five minutes to convince me to vote for you. And then my food came. And I said, OK, uh, grab my food. And she said, Mr. Jansen, give me your card. Because actually, if you're on the ballot in November, I am going to vote for you. And I've heard that at the doors. I've been knocking on doors. And I asked for the wife. And the husband answers. And Mark says, well, uh, my wife's not home. She's a strong Democrat. But Mr. Jansen, I've got to say, I've been reading uh, all your mallards. The messages resonate with me. I can't believe this, but for the first time, I'm actually going to vote Democratic because I feel that my own party's abandoned me and I can't take what's going on, the bigotry, the hatred that's coming out of the White House right now. So that's how we're going to win this. You know, Bob always brags that he steals Democratic votes every time. I'm going to steal Republican votes from him. If our Hillary voters come out here, this should be a seat that we flip come November. This is a seat that we turn blue. Thank you. I think I can win is because of the values that I represent. 
So I would say, what does it mean to be a good American? What does it mean to be a good Virginian? I think it takes two things. One, you believe that every person has the same opportunity to succeed and that whoever is the most hardworking, entrepreneurial, intelligent, the one who strives for it, that's the person who should succeed. And also, people's personal freedoms. Individual freedoms, freedom of religion, freedom of speech, everything that no one can take away from you. That's what makes you a good American, that's what makes you a good Virginian. These are the kind of things that I'm running on. Bob Marshall doesn't represent those things. He represents taking away people, doesn't want people to have personal freedom. He wants to get involved in everyone's choices and personal beliefs. He wants to tell women what to do with their bodies. He wants to stop people from being happy when they have nothing to do with it. So I think I'm the one who can attract moderate votes out of everyone here. I'm the one who's come from two conservative organizations. Being a liberal in the military, it's not that easy. Believe me. <laughs> Believe me. I've lived in all different corners of the country. Southwestern Virginia, Southern Virginia. I was not, I was not a lot of company down there either. My platform is based off of things that are good for all Virginians. I'm going to remind the independents and the Republicans, kind of like Steve was talking to, I probably have more Republicans who signed my uh, uh, signature to get on the ballot than anybody. So I had to do a lot more talking and convincing to them. But my candidacy is based off things that are good for all Virginians. Infrastructure, education, free and fair districting and elections. And Bob Marshall, his, his entire um, term in office has been based off of extreme right-wing um, biased views that he can't even get the rest of his Republicans to sign on. So when I knock on these independent doors, I'm going to be the one who gets those votes and people support. So please vote for me, 213. Thank you.